Hello everyone and welcome to another video. For this one I'll be tackling an entire squad which is highly unusual for me. Uh, the subject in this case are a bunch of Soviet motorized infantry guys from um, Eureka Miniatures. Uh, now this is a company that um, is not particularly well known but they do produce lots of fairly gorgeous looking and I, in my opinion very realistic looking um, moderns which is not exactly something that most people see. And to start with, I'll be painting the camouflage smocks that are covered over their um, uniforms. So let's get to it. So, as you can see, it's really the initial stages really are not a uh, difficult process. It's just a matter of uh, layering over with the uh, the base green color for the uniform which in this case is Vallejo model color uniform green which is a very nice um, verdant green in my opinion um, and I was basing this largely on the uh, studio pictures from Eureka Miniatures and I aim to get a roughly similar result to what they achieved on their um, display pieces so I'm not going to bore you with the details so let's skip over to the next stage shall we Alright, so the um, uniforms on these guys on the test miniatures that I saw on the internet from Eureka, they're wearing the basically an outer suit, which is some kind of camouflage smock, which uh, presumably covers their main day uniform. Um, it has a camouflage, a two-tone camouflage pattern with some uh, leaf-like patterns over the um, this flat green. So I'm trying my best to um, replicate what I saw in the test miniatures. Now, a thing I did find with these miniatures is that photo references for what they were going for in real life were very difficult to find, at least via Google. So, if I was doing this again, I'd probably take some more time to do more research. Um, like, for example, those Osprey books are pretty good for this sort of thing, but um, yeah. Couldn't find all of the photos I could find, unfortunately, were not exactly of the best quality, which made it very frustrating to see if I'd gotten any uh, this process correct. Um, yeah, it's just um, a fairly time and labor intensive process of sketching this, sketching in these little patterns. Uh, error prone, as you can see, with me clearing, clearing something up there. But, you know, um, it just takes time and uh, effort. So with the camouflage done, I'm doing the um, second most um, common color in the uniform, and that is the color of the um, the flak jacket and uh, most of the storage kit and webbing, which from the reference photos of the miniatures and um, some color plates I found, seem to be a kind of khaki tan color. So the color I ended up going for was green, uh, brown ochre, or green ochre, I don't remember which one. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much a simple case of base coating the entire model with the color. Well, not the entire model, the um, the bits in particular which um, are this color. It's a convoluted way of saying paint the right bits, I suppose. And that's pretty much it. Um, so yeah, you'll notice that I'm not really doing much shading yet. That's because I am uh, but trying to use some squad style methods. So I'm batching out all of the colors first, then I'm going to use a uniform wash over the model. I uh, will get to that in a bit. Alright, another uh, color that's going on are the, um, is the helmet. So this um, I've seen on the reference photos is some kind of generic or military drab or green, so I'm just painting that um, in sequence. I'm also painting the RPG warhead the same color. Um, otherwise that's the only real um, painted metal on the miniature. So yep, yeah, also doing other colors now. So, and something really striking about uh, Soviet infantry I find is, especially Soviet infantry from the late Cold War era, is that the furniture on their rifles and their magazines are made out of a very orange Bakelite, which honestly I think is an incredibly striking look and I kind of like it. So I've 
even uh, borrowed this for some science fiction miniatures because I think it looks that interesting. Um, yeah, so it's basically the colors you want to hit for this are the foregrip and the magazine. Um, the stock, well, unless, apart from the SVD and the RPK, that's the um, sniper rifle and the uh, squad automatic weapon for those who are, uh, who are not unfortunate, terrible Millsbergs like myself, are, um, um, they have a metal folding stock, so I'm not obviously not painting that the Bakelite, Bakelite color. But yeah, the, I find that the orange looks incredibly striking against um, the regular greens and um, earthy colors. Oh, and um, another thing which the strangely wasn't reflected on the test uh, miniatures, studio miniatures I saw, was that the uh, bayonet um, handle and sheath was made out of the same material. So I've also painted those the same as uh, the um, magazine and the foregrip of the AKs. And uh, a little bit of trivia, this, these guys appear to be equipped with the AK-74. That is the AK chambered in 545, which is a uh, caliber which, which replaced the 762 by 39 older versions. Um, you know, if you want to learn more, watch Forgotten Weapons or something. Uh, but yeah, just little bits of Cold War trivia. It can allegedly fire 556 without issue and was engineered that way. Oh, and uh, 556 is the standard NATO, one of the standard NATO cartridges, uh, the light one for the EM16. I'm sure everybody's heard of that. Okay, now, what are we working on now? All right, so for a lot of these colors, I'm going to base them in sort of like um, one big run. So I'm not going to do fully do a color and then just be done with it. I'm going to start heating up all of the other bits and pieces, like I've already talked about the metal and the, um, the Bakelite. But the um, final color, is going to be shaded brown at any rate, is also the um, belt, the pistol belt and just belt that's on a few of these miniatures. Um, those are going to hit get hit with a leather, a, a light leather tan brown color. You'll uh, see that sooner rather than later. Anyway, sadly the uh, base coat, well, probably not really sadly, but the base coating process is quite boring, so let's skip through a lot of it, shall we, and move on to the next major stage of the project. So yeah, apologies for the good view of my hands, but this is indeed the part where I meant that I mentioned earlier where I painted the um, the leather. Now, some of the belt kit, like like I mentioned, the pistol belt is obviously um, a more of a traditional leather color rather than the uh, dyed material web uh, webbing belt kit. So I'm just um, painting those where appropriate. It's I personally find it's quite hard to pick out which ones which at times, but uh, what idea? I think what I did ended up looking good anyway. And you'll notice that for this one, I'm not being particularly neat. I'm just trying to get the color on. And since I'm um, keeping the over splash the splashes to areas that are already painted that um, ochre color, I can easily clean that up by going back in with the base. Since I'm being particularly careful not to get it onto the um, camouflage that I already painted. So, yep, as I mentioned, the wash. Now, the mixture I'm using is Agrax Earthshade, but it's mixed one part one with Lamy and Medium to thin it down a bunch. That's because the um, I am washing the um, the camouflage with it, and I'm not going to be relayering it. I want the um, original color to show through. So, all I'm going to do is highlight the camouflage smock later on. Uh, but other otherwise, I'm also using the same mixture to shade the... Um, you know, the um, ochre body armor and everything else that's, you know, uh, brown, green, or orange. You know, brown really is the universal shader. It's quite good for just generic, like, troops kind of units, especially when you want them to give the impression that they've been um, rolling around in the bush for a week to a month. All 
Now, one thing to be careful um, with this is um, you have to go back um, before it really starts drying and observe where the wash is pooling and as it it'll pool down towards the legs, make sure you break it up a bit in the areas where you don't want it to pool too much, such as around the legs. Oh, and I say around the legs, I mean around the cuff of the boots in this case, because we want the colors to stay through and the shade to settle in the actual shadows, not on more exposed areas. So it's just a matter of being mindful while you're applying the material. Anyway, um, let's move on. And that's our fully shaded model. Um, so for a vast majority of it, we're going to go back and simply relay the base colors, leaving like, you know, any other mid to uh, tabletop grade project, leaving the deeper recesses, the shaded um, base coat color. So yeah, it's just um, a fairly simple matter of going through and hitting the colors as appropriate. It's definitely a very um, production line style process, which, you know, is a bit of, um, it's a style of painting that can really bore people. My, I must admit, I certainly am one of them. That's why this is the kind of thing which you can really do while also doing something else, such as catching up on your shows, podcasts, or whatever. Um, I think I watched a large chunk of, what was it? maybe the last of us while i was doing this project and then i since i felt in a zombie mood i went and did um rewatch some walking dead so yeah it's um you know a good way to pass the time when you have nothing else going in your life painting little mans but enough about me um so yeah that's pretty much it let's skip forward to some more interesting bits So yep, the helmets are just getting a relayer of the uh, base metallic color, and uh, that disposable AT rocket is the same. And once we get around to it, the RPG um, warhead will also get the same treatment. And we'll relayer the webbing, belt kit, everything else with the two base colors. In this case, the pistol belt will get hit by the leather again, and the, um, you know, everything else will get hit by the ochre again. So, as you can see, it is an incredibly um, standard project so far. The only place that doesn't get relayed, as I mentioned, was the camouflage smock, because doing that would drive my head in, and I think it may ruin the effect in a lot of cases. But I think it is possible, you just have to be patient if you want to attempt it. And be willing to re-sketch the old patterns if you need to. Alright, so that's all of the, uh, re the relayering done, so now onto the highlights. So for almost every highlight in this project, uh, all I did was mix some buff in with the base colour to get a washed out version of the base colour. So, as you can see, this is basically being done right now for the um, Bakelite, and it's uh, coming out quite well, I believe. Same is true for the helmets. All I'm really doing is running a layer of highlight around the slightly upturned rim of the helmet. And of course, where it's appropriate, like on this um, disposable missile launcher, putting some highlights as needed. Oh, clearly I'll come back to that one. Sorry about that. And then, uh, oh no, there I am. Remember to come back to it after all. Yeah, just put my highlights down and move on with the next thing on the model. So yep, uh, same is true for the leather of on the um, more tradi non, tr not even non-traditional, non more of the older-ish uh, mixed in uniform parts, such as that you know messenger case or map case, whatever it is, and uh, you know his pistol belt and all of the other um, accoutrement of the 1985 or 1980 Soviet motorized rifleman. Now I think I may have made a mistake and I forgot to record myself highlighting the webbing and I apologize for that. But as you can see I'm now um, 
not exactly organized my approach to this. So right now I'm just moving on with the next round of base coats, which is the boots. They're getting painted just black gray and they'll just get a highlight and that'll be it. Nothing fancy. I'm just going for a reasonable tabletop standard. Uh, not, a, not aiming to win any paint competitions. Okay, highlighting the uniform. Now, I can guarantee you this is incredibly difficult and time-consuming. So my process for the ca highlighting camouflage is... Well, there's a couple of ways you can do it. One way is you highlight each camouflage color individually. If you're go going quite insane and using three, a three or four um, color camouflage pattern, then you... Well, would have to highlight each color individually, and that way lies madness. So instead, all I've done is got some of my buff color, mixed in about one part color, one part glaze medium, and some water, and I'm highlighting with that mixture. Now all this does is it tints the raised edges a little bit white and leaves a little bit of the, the pattern showing through, which I think does a good job of uh, being a fake highlight in a way, in a way which you know. For just trying to get through miniatures at a reasonable clip, I think it's a perfectly acceptable technique for, um, you know, achieving results without uh, breaking the um, your brain on it's such a complicated bit of work. So, on to the flesh now. The color I'm using is, I think, Sunny Skin Tone, because I think it um, it's a really good tanned-looking skin tone, which seems appropriate for um, a professional soldier who's been uh, rolling around in the field all day. Um, yeah, so that'll, this will take, like most flesh colors, will take two to three good base coats, and it's also going to get shaded differently to everything else, so that's why I am leaving it till last. Or well, not quite last, but damn close last. Um, so yeah, it's just a matter of face, hands, and also trying to get the little bit behind their um, helmet. And that's pretty much it for the base coat. And another feature which um, I was um, did at the same time was the... Um, the helmet strap, which is, from my research, a brown leather, the same as the uh, boot, uh, not the boot, the belt, and um, other random leather bits and pieces. So, um, one thing I am doing now is apparently washing, but I think before I did this, I may or may not have caught it, got it on camera, but I put a small layer of hair colors um, in the little bits of exposed hair where it is, so just grabbed a mixture, and I just painted the base coat, and I washed the um, wash in, which is uh, Reichland Flesh Shade from Citadel Uncut. Um... And yeah, because I don't mind um, being a little um, more intense with the shade, because we're going to work on the flesh um, a bit separately later on. Nope, I lied. I think this is the part where I'm painting in that hair. As I mentioned, it's a bit of a tedious and careful process. You have to occasionally um, go back and clean up the bits you oversplash onto other pieces. It's um, a bit of a nightmare with these particular miniatures.
so on to finishing off the flesh so I'm going to relayer the base flesh in more of a highlight fashion to start accentuating the um, fleshy details and uh, such as you know the all of the usual suspects you've heard me say a hundred times before uh, cheekbones nose chin those sorts of things and of course the fingers and then I'm gonna uh, go back again with another highlight color I think this one is pale skin tone mixed in with a little bit of the base and I'm gonna put in an additional highlight on a few of the more prominent features just a little dot here and there like on the knuckles and the nose Yep, and there's our promised uh, fine. Actually, no, that is not the highlight. Now, since I'm a sadist, I'm painting the eyes. Now, one thing I like about these min one of the things I like about these miniatures is that they have a very good, well sculpted eye for what they are. Um, so yeah, it's just a matter of with my Windsor Newton Series Seven, I'm just going to paint a small white strip and a small black, and then a pair of small black dots, ideally giving the impression of looking in the same direction. And I think I was only moderately successful in the, doing the eyes this time, but you know, it takes practice and it doesn't, and in my case, it doesn't always come out 100%. But tabletop quality, it's, I think it's good enough for what I was aiming for. And finally, the metallics. So this is a part I left to last to, um, for the sake of my brushes. So, you know, generally metallics are quite hard on brushes. So I try to leave it to the last minute, use my, uh, so it doesn't contaminate, so when it contaminates my rinse water, none of my regular brushes go have to go through it. Um, and then, you know, use my uh, not long for this world brushes to do the metallics. So it's a fairly simple matter, you just uh, layer the, um, it, well for the metallics in this case, since it's a modern metallic, I used a combination of Vallejo model color black and gunmetal grey to get a very, um, a, like, black finished and processed me metal color, which is, you know, pretty much the standard for painting modern military equipment. You never see it, like, perfectly shiny unless it's um, something which was made that way, which, you know, generally it isn't for reasons which I hope are fairly obvious to even the most um, uninitiated of um, military nerd. So yep, the medals go on the um, all of the working parts of the AK, the receiver, the barrel, stock, and also the belt buckle, which I'm not sure if I got the color right, but I think I was getting a bit jack of this project and I just wanted to finish it off. So, you know, it was on the palette. I just wanted to get it done. That's what I ended up doing. No big deal. The results still look pretty good in my opinion. Anyway, let's skip through to the finished result. I will also note that I didn't apply any other highlighting, which, you know, if I was gonna to try to put in a little bit more effort, I would maybe put some like point highlights in a few places just to give the metal a little more shine where it may have worn through. All right, so that's the Soviet motor rifles complete. Now overall, I think these the quality is pretty good tabletop, which I'm happy with. And one thing that the more keen-eyed of you may notice is that I have yet to apply the um, any static grass to the base, which I've um, I've done off camera and off this video for my um, you know the posts to the usual socials. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's pretty much it. Um, overall, I do like well not like just like love Eureka miniatures for their de like very good looking moderns they genuinely are interesting miniatures for to me um and they give me an opportunity to paint things which you know a bit more um grounded in reality which i do like um but yeah that's pretty much it um apologies for the bumping on the turntable thingy i do have to buy another one if something's wrong with the gears in it 
and uh, yeah, they occasionally don't fully uh, mesh up, and that's why you see the occasional bumpiness. But yeah, overall, um, I am quite happy with this project, and um, yeah, I hope this inspires you to give um, modern, moderns a bit of a go, because they uh, truly are an interesting uh, painting project, uh, especially if um, 40k or World War II is all you've ever known. Um, I think the downside is that there aren't too many games you can play with these um, miniatures. Um, Force on Force by Osprey Games is a rule set for it, and I've uh, had a poke through it, but I don't remember much of it. Um, yeah, so unfortunately you'll be hard-pressed to find an opponent for, um, you know, who wants to play with a rule set or period which would work with these miniatures, but I don't know. I just painted them because I think they're neat. Anyway, I think that'll do for uh, my yammering. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope it's been worthwhile. I will uh, see you on the next video, which, um, if it pans out, might be a two-parter, because I'll be um, aiming to push myself creatively with a more detailed and more display-oriented kit. I'll catch you on the flip side. Fare thee well.